just go through the concepts of this reverse transform. Start from there. Go through the definitions and everything. Then a topic, thermal conduction. Right. So this uh, definition we have already seen, right? So it is basically a process in which heat is transmitted from one part of an object to another part at a low temperature through molecular collision. So how is actually energy getting transmitted because of the molecular collision, right? But the point to be noted here is there is actually no movement of particles that is taking place without any actual movement of particles, right? So molecular mechanism of thermal conduction of earth, which materials can undergo they are solids which get heated through the process of conduction, right? So generally. What happened yesterday we saw, right, when you skipped that ball, you saw that the particles which were directly exposed to the heat, right, so what happened to the particles energy at that point? They start increasing, right, so when they start increasing, they start vibrating with a greater amplitude because we know that solids have a lack structure arrangement, if you have seen your uh, chemistry, right. There is basically a solid state structure that is available, which you learn in your 12th standard, first standard. Most of the time they are deleting it as well as you know, but solid state, it says that you have a structural arrangement of all the molecules. So those molecules will start vibrating with greater amplitude in such a way. What do you mean by amplitude? The maximum distance from the mean position. So they start vibrating with amplitude. So they have greater kinetic energy. So what will they do to the neighboring particles? What will they do to the neighboring particles? They will undergo a collision. Due to collision, what will happen? Energy transfer will take place as a result of which energy is transmitted from one place to another without the actual movement of particles. So after the particle has undergone collision, it will come back to its main position and again the energy is going to get transmitted. Right? So this is the uh, so this is the way where we transmit energy to solids from one point to another. Now there is something called as steady state condition. Like what do you mean by the steady state condition? So if you see something called as states, right, that speaks about uh, the position which the object is present. So what are the temperature or it gives us the data related to the temperature at different locations. So what do you, what do you mean by variable state? Right? So if you consider a metal rod, for example, if this is a metal rod and it is heated at one end, let's say at point A, it is heated at point A, then what will happen? Energy is going to get transmitted from the hotter end to the colder. Right. So during this process, can I say that each cross section, right? So each cross section 
in, in each cross section, the preceding one is shorter than the succeeding one. Right? This is shorter compared to the other. Similarly, this is shorter compared to the other. It keeps on going in this way. Right? When this kind of a scenario takes place, then there will be a particular instant at which the cross section itself will have a fixed temperature. Beyond that, the temperature will not change. Okay? So, when the temperature of a particular surface or a particular uh, what do you call cross-section is fixed, then you call it as an isothermal condition. And that kind of a heat flow is what is called as heat flowing under steady state condition. So what happens in steady state condition? Huh? If you draw a line perpendicular to the cross-sectional area, at that point, every point on that line will have a constant temperature. So don't get confused. Constant temperature is not throughout the rod. Constant temperature is only for that particular cross-section. Like a steam flow, that is called a steady flow. Right? Same thing. That's why we call it a steady flow. It's steady state only, failure. Steady state. Right. So what we can say is, if I take Q to be the amount of heat, right? Q to be the amount of heat that is flowing through the material, then Q is observed to be directly proportional to, see, Q is observed to be directly proportional to the difference in temperature. Difference in temperature of whom? Difference in the temperature of the two endpoints. Right? It is observed to be directly proportional to the time for which the heat is flowing. And third point, it is inversely proportional to the distance between the ends of the conductor. It is inversely proportional to the distance of the ends of the conductor. Suppose I take this to be the rod, A, B, this is T1, this is T2, if this length is L. So the amount of heat going through this is directly proportional to T1 minus T2, directly proportional to the length of the conductor, directly proportional to the time it takes, sorry, not directly proportional to length, it's inversely proportional to the length, right? And it is directly proportional to the area of cross-section. The area of cross-section here it is directly proportional. So when you combine all these parameters, then Q will be directly proportional to T1 minus T2 into small t divided by L multiplied with T. So actually if I bring this T to the left-hand side, then I'll get Q divided by T is, equal, is directly proportional to a into T1 minus T2, the whole divided by L. So, when I remove the constant, what will I get? I'll get a constant of proportionality which is called as the thermal conductivity. Right? So, Q by T is directly proportional to this value. So, Q by T will be equal to K into A into T1 minus T2, the whole divided by L. Right? Where this K is called as the thermal conductivity. They can make a note of this point. It should be only then this one method. It is going to change to be for integration. Right. Now observe. So Q by T will be equal to Ka into, can I write it as delta T divided by delta X? See, delta X and I call it as length. The distance between those two points, I take it as delta X 
then this q by t is called as the rate of heat flow i'll write it separately rate right? so q by t is equal to k into a into delta t divided by delta x correct this q by t can be called as heat current k is called as thermal conductivity a is called as the area of cross section delta t by delta x is called as the temperature gradient for temperature gradient okay now if i rearrange and write it like this see if i represent q by t as i is equal to this k into a divided by delta x i write it separately into delta t now if i rearrange this equation and write i'll get delta t is equal to i into delta x divided by k into a so if you observe this is similar to the concept of potential difference is equal to current multiplied with resistance right so this delta x divided by k into a can also be called as thermal resistance so they can be called as the thermal resistance so where r will be equal to what is that you got delta x divided by k into a no so this you remember the resistance for electrical it is rho into l divided by a you remember so instead of rho you have 1 by k because 1 by k k is thermal conductivity 1 by k will be thermal resistivity give it all a name x is the delta okay so rho into in the place of delta x you have l and in the place of a you have a itself so that is why you also call this delta x divided by k into a as thermal resistance so this will actually help you to solve problems when two uh, solid rods of equal cross section area are connected in series or tandem make a note you by its amount of heat flowing per unit and what is current amount of charge flowing per unit it's simple if you want if that i is confusing you you take it as h so that you remember that h as heat flow there is no specific notation only trying to connect the dots because of temperature difference the heat will flow out but remember the concept is if you want the heat to flow from one point to another there should be a temperature difference the temperature difference is not there heat will not flow at all and that kind of a situation is called as thermal equilibrium when temperature of two bodies according to principle of calorimetry what should happen the heat lost by the hot substance will be equal to heat gained by the cold substance till when till that condition of thermal equilibrium is attained thermal equilibrium na the temperature of the junction will be the same for both
What is that? What is the right? Uh, what is the unit? Unit of key. So no. What is that? Let's check for it now. Uh, joule second inverse. Correct. So joule per second can also be written as what? That is the unit of power. So what meter inverse per second inverse? Okay. So that is going to be the SI. Now what about the CJS unit? CJS unit will be so replace joule with carrier. Second is second will be meter replaced with centimeter. So we don't have centimeter, and this is not ten actually. This degree Celsius inverse. Okay, then what is going to be the dimensional core block K? Dimensional core block K will be M L T e minus three K minus one. This is one such formula where you would have seen the seven fundamental quantities with temperature Kelvin's value being used. So this K stands for Kelvin, and this K stands for thermal conductivity. So don't get confused. It is M L T e minus three K minus one. Okay, that is going to be the SI unit. So clear. So thermal conductivities of different materials are given here. For silver, it is four zero six. Copper, three eighty five. Aluminium, it is two zero five. Brass, one not nine eight three point two. You need not remember the value. Right? It is thirty four point seven and mercury is going to be eight point three. This is the decreasing order of thermal conductivity. Right? For non insulated, for non metals, it is written in this one. Right? Electrical conductivity is different. Electrical conductivity has something to do with the amount of charge. First of all, you will not get electrical conductivity for non-metals, because they are not good conductors of electricity. Metals you will get, but it will not be exactly the same value because parameters are different. I am going to control you. Uh, when you are writing about the electrical conductivity, you speak about the resistivity of the metal. When you are resistivity, you are not going to talk about thermal conductivity. Thermal work on the side is heat. How much is the material allowing the heat to pass through them besides the conductivity of the material? Okay. So all these things I explained, right? Similarly, what is going to be? So I have written the equation. No? From that, can you tell me what is going to be the SI unit for thermal resistance? Thermal resistance. I wrote an expression.
Kelvin per Kelvin second per second or Kelvin watt inverse. So SI unit is going to be M minus one, L minus two, P three, K. M minus one, L minus two, P three, and K. R is the term of existence. This is the notation. See some real time examples of thermal conductivity. One is in winter, a metallic handle appears colder than the wooden one because of the thermal conductivity. Second is cooking utensils are provided with wooden handles. Yesterday we saw no, right? not a cooking utensil, but you would have seen we had an insulating rod at the end of it too. Avoid the conductivity. Maybe if we had held it for some more time, we could have gone through. Right? You know what is a quilt? Bed sheet. Blanket is a bed sheet. Bed sheet is a bed to another one. Blanket. A thick blanket is called as a quilt. Okay? So inside you have a cotton material. And the matter of you have a cloth being fabricated and you have a stitch. A new quilt is warmer than an old quilt. Okay. Because a new quilt contains more number of pores. So it contains more air and its pores as compared to the old quilt. Because air will block the heat. That is a bad conductivity. That's what the thermal conductivity of it says. Air per 0 0.05. It's not a good conductor of energy. So when you talk about this quilt, a principle, what is the meaning? A new quilt contains more air in its pore as compared to the old quilt. Right? Pores, that is a solid material. material not only pores. It's not completely quilt in your part of the issue. Because but in pores, air is there, no air. You have to pass through the air and the liquid. Okay, in the material within the material, these two materials are there. If these two have to communicate with each other, right? Air is a conducting medium, right? It's not about conduction. I'm saying if you want the heat to get transferred from here to here, radiation here to touch from them. If I hear a key to one thing is sensagana, where is it traveling from through this medium only? So it has to conduct it. It has to allow the medium to interact. Another when the core when these materials are going in, what will happen? Air particles are going in, they do not allow the heat to get transferred. That is why a new quilt is going to be warmer than a cold quilt. Yes, suppose we get to see you wash into all those things, you know, whether we are in depth and all those things. But initially, when you buy it, you know, generally when you go to the shop and see also when you press it, and they push from the like here. That, that's that's a factor. Okay, like this, you have any other thing. See, why do they? You you have seen how ice is transmitted from one place to another. They don't generally take ice in, into a thermal box and then they they don't keep moving it. They put it in sawdust because sawdust will act as a layer of protection for avoiding the thermal conduction. Sawdust. Dust, but dust the saw. Yes, say you sawdust. The wooden particles, the carpenters are on the edge and the road, and the dust particles. So, because sawdust and air trapped in it is again going to be a bad conductor. It does not allow the ice to melt. That is why you are going to carry it from one point to another. So, these are all the real time applications. The sawdust will everything will happen. It's in the next will happen. The air particles will be locked at the end. Through diffusion or whatever it is. Eskimos are the equivalent of 
Similarly, refrigerator also you see the walls are actually insulated. Okay? There are two reasons. One is they don't provide the walls to the conductor because by mistake, if you go and touch, you are going to get shocked. Right? That is one thing. And secondly, in terms of uh, thermal conductivity, if you are going to sleep, obviously they should be insulated because it should be an adiabatic condition. You don't want the heat to get extended in the surrounding area. You are trapping it in the sleep. And refrigerators again work on the concept of convection. What convection? Force convection. They are forcing using a motor pump to actually make the materials inside the So that is actually a force process which is a thermodynamic pattern. All the concepts are related. Okay, that is one thing. Similarly, you don't want the outside heat also to get into the refrigerator. So you don't want that influence. You keep it open for a longer duration, you cannot have the same amount of chillness. You are allowing the outside air to pass it. So it is slightly warmer. Right, due to convection again, it is going to travel. So, because expand, expand, expand. I thought that when I did not enter the market, that when I did see something, I did not expand. It needs some time to contract. If you do enter door, that is the problem. That is why we cut the sides. Sometimes it can be because of that. Because of expansion or contraction, sometimes it can be a problem with the hinges also. It depends. Other other you have to identify depending on in the orientation. Exact the top and the fixed layer or door one the parallel or that then there is an issue with the expansion. If the ill up in a tear that na that is the problem with the hinge part. And the marine other. Okay. So can we try this problem? Calculate the rate of loss of heat for glass with a thousand centimeter square and thickness of zero point centimeter when the temperature inside is thirty seven degrees Celsius and outside is minus five degrees Celsius. So what are the formula you are going to use? Rate of loss of heat, Q by T is equal to K A into T1 minus T2 divided by L. So K is 22 into 10 power minus 3 into area is 1000 centimeters square. So everything is in SI unit. T1 minus T2 is going to be 37 plus 5, 42. The whole divided by what is going to be the length? Zero point so four into ten power minus one. This will cancel this two hundred and fifty times. Twenty two into two fifty into forty two into ten power minus two is going to be the answer. This is going to be two by two. Okay, calculation part. 
Generally, when they use the word loss, you expect the value to be negative. Here it is not negative because you are taking from higher to lower. So let's proceed. So this is all about thermal conductivity. Answer two thirty one. There are risk factors. Two thirty one. Calculations. That's fine. So what is what two three one zero? According to what is the value, whatever the value is given, that is correct. Two three one zero. The printing is. See, the next one is similar problem. I am not getting into those details. Uh, I didn't. If we discuss convection, of what is the theory behind it? We saw an experiment. That's okay. For convection, there is a small explanation. Okay, what happens in a convection? It is a process by which heat flows from the region of higher temperature to a region of lower temperature. That is a natural flow. That is obvious, right? By actual movement of particles itself. Instead, you saw the wave structure itself got raised. The actual movement was there. So, where does where does this convection take place? It takes place in the concept of fluids and liquids and gases. Right. So just read it out. Can you read it out? Can you able to see? Can you read it? What is written there? When fluids and liquids are heated up, okay, explain. Read it out. And liquids are heated mainly by the process of convection. Yes. So what are the two important physical factors that play an important role? One is buoyancy, and the second is gravity. So buoyancy will always lift the particle. Gravity will always pull the particle down. So here, if now think of the logic, which particles will experience buoyancy and which particles will experience gravity? Think. If you have the lighter particles, will obviously experience buoyancy. So where are the lighter particles going to be available for us? At the bottom, right? If you have a frame given to it, there are crystals of frame. You know, I'll be showing it today. So crystals, not this experiment. I'll show you how K one O four works. K one O four. When you heat it, right? K one O four. What are you looking at? What color? Full. K one O four. What are you looking at? What color? Right. Right. Who put it there? Right. When you heat it at the bottom, crystals of K one O four. What will happen? They become less dense. So when density is going to decrease, obviously they tend to raise. Right. So if I have two layers where the density here is less compared to the layer here, why is that? Why is the layer at the top having more density? Because it is still colder. So when you started, the whole thing had a constant temperature, but at the bottom you suddenly raise the temperature. So its density is decreased because its volume is increasing. Why? Because substances expand on heating. 
So when volume increases, density decreases. They go up. So the particles which are heavy at the top start coming down. So through this process, actually the convection takes place. Right. That is why when water is boiling, also you have to see that kind of you know the transfer. Bubbles sort of particular. That is actually showing the moment of particles because of the positions and all these things. Right. That's what is given here. So when you talk about convection, again there are two types of convection. What are the natural and the forced one? What is natural convection? If the material moves due to the difference in it, in, in the density, then due to the difference in its own density, then you call it as natural convection. So the process of heat transfer is called natural, or you call it as pre-convection. So natural convection arises due to what reason? Due to unequal heating. If everything is equally heated, then there is obviously no difference in density and there is no difference in gravity. Right. So due to unequal heating, then what happens is the more heated and the less dense part of the fluid rise and are replaced by the colder parts. Here you get original. Right. So natural convection is one which is responsible for the different types of winds in the atmosphere. It is happening due to the natural convection. Right. Whereas when you talk about the forced convection, what you have? Force, something is used. If the heated material is forced to move, by an agency like a pump or a blower, then the process of heat transfer is called post convection. Examples are air conditioning, central heating system, and heating of liquid by crisp stirring. Right. When you heat a liquid by stirring it forcefully, it is not happening naturally, then you call it as post convection. In all the yes, see, force convection solar, but their heat is getting generated, you're generating with them. That is the difference between you're having you're using a chemical process. And a combust, combustion when you try to already heat is available or a particular temperature available, then what you're going to do is what is called as force convection. You say you're cooking something, right? You want to cook, see, for example, you're doing something, right? Let's say you're doing some fry. What will happen if you keep the fry just like that? For some time and even the layer at the bottom will start burning, but the layer at the top will do nothing to come because we didn't get the enough amount of heat. So, what do we do? We generally toss it, toss it, or we stir it depending on what kind of food you are cooking. So, that can again be called as a post convection. So, though the heat is getting transferred, but we are actually heating something. Here they are talking about liquid. I just gave you an example for you to understand. Right? So, when you talk about heating that kind of a process. By dealing through that kind of problem called this post convection. Okay, this is okay, the lighter objects. No, lighter objects, when something goes up, something has to come down. If something goes up, what will happen to this layer? Something should fill it. No? Who will fill it? The lenser ones will. Nothing will happen. We start evaporating depending on what kind of medium. We generally don't do that from the top. <laughs> if you do that, that part will be heavy. So nothing you cannot see. But you can you can still see the conduction process to take place, but you not be as effective as the one. So what is radiation? It is a process by which heat is transmitted from one place to another. Uh, Because it is exposed to atmosphere, it's trying to push the atmosphere, but that is trying to push it down. Surface chemistry, my friend, see so what is happening at the surface. At the surface level, the one which is exposed to the atmosphere, what will you try to do? If, I have, if you have more energy, what will you try to do? Let's say I have a tug of war. You have a tug of war between yourself and someone else. If you are more stronger, what will you do? We'll try to pull them towards you, right? Same thing is happening. The water particles are trying to push the atmosphere, the atmosphere is pushing it experiencing it is not able to escape. collision very Vapor pressure should not. Bottom the sukhi there. Bottom the expand it to try So malawar the escape complete. What will it try to do? Will you get a backfire from the atmospheric pressure? 
it's energy of it it's not about bubble it is it's not exactly bubble pattern it is try to block 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 on the point actually it is it is a collision that is actually taking place in the point energy transfer than another point i told you in everything the whole world runs on our energy if we are designing more energy we'll always try to escape that's what chemistry says if server has more energy it will be unstable it has to react other than the spontaneity issue Otherwise, we are using all these terms like Gibbs free energy or entropy, entropy, whatever we call it. Right? That speaks about the randomness of the system. So everything is related. Other than that, you are trying to give more of mathematical explanation. It becomes physics somehow. Other than that, very physical things. Thermodynamics calls for physical things. Because you are actually using physics to explain the things. With other terms, you are using your understanding. So whenever the logic is very simple, whenever something has more energy, it rises. It is trying to escape, but it is not. After something, what will happen? Maybe it gains more energy, and the bubbles could have already evaporated. For example, if you make a rasa and all, what do they generally do? They heat it for a longer duration. Why do they do it? One thing is for the powder to get blended with the water. Basically, it's only that. It's basically water, and then you are putting some powder to add some flavor to it. When that is happening, after something, let's say you run it, you run the stove for let's say forty-five minutes. Go and see. You see that the level of uh, Level of water will increase because it's evaporated. Then other thing, more than uh, boiling point, go it sir. As in, if one gas is created, more it will be. You want to be called that? How does that happen? That material is heated. That is why when you eat also, if you try to see when you try to eat, you put you put the powder. Try to mix it. That is why they mix it. Or if you take from the cup and drink, it will only be water. So you will not feel the taste of it because the powder is sitting. Like it has got blend. That is a different story. But you cannot have that water alone. You need the flavor to come again. So that is why when you kindle the uh, water, when so you kindle it, so when you just try to disturb it, no, it will again stir it. It will again come to the top. It will get mixed. Right. That is because of the density. That logic, that is why the game is not working. You can't say that some other thing. Another the game that that is the best example you can think of. Right. So when you talk about radiation, I gave you an example now. Right. Now this object is hotter. If I try to go closer to it, I'll be able to sense it. Why is it happening? Because it is radiating heat. Right. So when this, so that's fine. I'm saying radiation didn't say that medium should not be there. Radiation can happen even without the medium as part of the process. Other than medium, we have to do other things. Just because we say light travels through vacuum, a tree to dent or it, that can be very important. But we are not living in vacuum. So in Kerala, then you have to study with these parameters. Vacuum is taken as a reference. So radiation concept, or more, we generally speak about more about electromagnetic radiation, which is light. So when we stand near fire, we feel the warmth, right? Because of what? Because we receive the heat through the process of Radiation. Similarly, where is the heat? Uh, how is the heat from the sun coming to us through the process of radiation covering millions of kilometers of empty space or vacuum? That is being covered. It is traveling through the atmosphere also. Maybe if that atmosphere was not there, you would have felt more heat, which we can't sustain. There are certain things which are actually protecting us as well, right? Yes, sir. Air, obviously, you think and tell me what will happen if air is there. Then there is conductivity also taking place. Air particles have to allow them to travel. So, which one will be more? Yes, because there is nothing to block it. There is nothing to block. Okay. So in this radiation, one of the important concepts that we need to understand is so there are basically three things. One is Newton's law of cooling. There is something called the Stefan Boltzmann law, and we have Bayes' displacement law. Okay. So the Newton law of cooling is there, right? They've learned this. Well, the derivation is important. The derivation is important. Anyway, we don't have an application in this figure, but when it comes to eleventh standard, as I told you, there are certain derivations. So Newton's law of cooling. Like what happens is uh, basically, let's say you have an object at a 
higher temperature and you want that object that object obviously at higher temperature when it's exposed to the surrounding it is not an adiabatic condition not in adiabatic. it is exchanged with the surroundings so the temperature difference between the system and the surroundings is less right so if the if the difference between the system and the surrounding is less then the rate at which as the name suggests newton's law of cooling means it has to lose energy the rate at which it is losing the heat in the surrounding depends on certain factors the first factor is it, it is directly proportional to the right so for, it depends on nn factor i'll talk about the proportional so the rate at which an object loses heat by radiation depends on parameters like the temperature of the object that is the system second is the temperature of the surrounding medium and third is the extent to which the system is exposed to the surrounding oh no like you know i'll give you an example let's say you have a tea cup which is very very hot tea is very hot tea cup which is hot let's assume the uh, cup in which you are drinking is a complete adiabatic situation that is it's a thermoplastic adiabatic so what will happen as long as you keep it covered the heat is going to sustain for longer duration let's assume that there is a cup right on top of the cup you kept a plate completely so if you go cup you will be feeling good here your cup when you are there you are keeping a plate completely covered the plate is also insulated and so what it happens the heat is not going to be lost whereas if i slightly move the plate and keep this portion exposed the heat will be lost but for it to lose more amount of heat i can keep it exposed like this so that is the meaning of the extent to which it is exposed to the surroundings so the rate at which it is going to lose how much time is it going to take to lose that heat to the surrounding depends on that factor as well how you are actually placing this purida right so the statement for newton's law of cooling please write it down the statement for newton's law of cooling is something like this rate of cooling rate of cooling of an object is directly proportional the rate of cooling of an object is directly proportional to the temperature difference to the temperature difference between the object and its surrounding is directly proportional to the temperature difference between the object and the surrounding provided temperature difference is very small okay so that is why when you say let's say you have a bucket of hot water okay so initially what will happen is if you use the heat at a faster rate till it reaches a warm temperature then we touch and see when it reaches a warm temperature from that warm temperature for it to become cold it will take more amount of time generally when it is very hot it uses the heat at a faster rate but after it becomes warm it will take some time because of the concept because of the application of newton's law of cooling that is why it is when you do you say it is directly proportional to temperature difference you will not get a linear relation let's see what will happen Either or okay. So mathematical expression of the problem. Now we are going to see the derivation of this. Right, this derivation is important. 
to practice it. Let's say you consider an object at a higher at a temperature T, and let T not be the temperature of the surrounding. Then, according to the Newton's law of cooling, the rate at which the heat is lost is directly proportional to whom? What is the statement we wrote? Is directly proportional to the temperature difference between the system and the surrounding. So, dQ by dt will be directly proportional to T minus T naught, where T is the temperature of the system, T naught is the temperature of the surrounding. Now, when I remove the proportionality symbol, we need to introduce a constant and let the constant decay. Don't get confused, this k is not thermal conductivity, it is some constant. Okay, right? It is a proportionality constant, and what does it depend on? It depends upon the area and the nature of surface of the body. Okay? It depends on the area and nature of the surface of the body. Suppose, write on these questions. So consider a hot object at temperature capital T. Consider an object at temperature capital T. The DQ by DT is the instantaneous rate at which the heat is lost. DQ of the use one of the instantaneous. They are saying this is the instantaneous value. You cannot say delta Q by delta T is T minus T. Delta Q by delta T is a delta use one of the average value. Average value you have sufficient amount of time to observe the change. But at some instant, the rate at which the heat is lost, another minus sign, the rate at which the heat is lost. Is directly proportional to the temperature of the object that is at that instant minus temperature of the surrounding. Breathe So let me see. Hmm? You need not write the whole thing. Write on this one. Rate of loss of heat is directly proportional to temperature. Minus dQ by dt is directly proportional to T minus T naught. Minus dQ by dt is equal to K times T minus T naught, where K is a proportional to constant and it depends upon the area and the nature of the surface of the body. According to the book, you know, in the chapter, you see, at the specific as long as you mention, you can use it, but yeah, but exam point of view, they will not accept it, but in terms of reality, it is okay. Now, see. Is equal to MC into DT. Can I say it is MC into DT? So the rate of loss of heat, upper DQ by DT will be what? DQ by DT will be equal to MC into D capital D divided by D small t. Correct? So what we can do now is this MC into dt divided by small d with a minus sign. That is what you wrote minus dq by dt is equal to k times k times t minus t naught. Did you write this? So what did I do there? What did I do here is I took the idea of right, we took the idea of the mass and specific heat into consideration and we tried to write dq in terms of mass and specific heat 
and then combine this expression. Let me call this as two. The second one is combined with the first one. So when you combine it, can I write it in this way? Is it clear to this way? Please make a note of it. Minus of loss of beta. So, here minus mc into dt divided by t minus t naught. Can I write it as k times d small t? Can I write it like this? Now, when I integrate on both the sides, right, or I'll write it as k divided by mc into dt, and there is a minus sign. So when I integrate it on both the sides, I'll get minus, I write something like this, it's called a log, log base e. Okay, so I'll write it as log itself. It's called log base e of t minus t naught is equal to k divided by mc into integral of dt is t. Okay. And when you are integrating on both the sides without limits, it's called indefinite integration and you need to add a constant. That constant is some c. Okay. Or I'll write it as some c is already used now. Uh, should I use c dash? Then what will happen in this scenario? Then t minus t naught or I can write log of t minus t naught base t is minus kt divided by mc minus c dash. Upper, what is t minus t naught equal to e power minus kt divided by mc minus c dash. So basically when you remove the log, the base will go the side as the base of the power. Log will become an exponent. Log and exponents are said to be inverse operation of each other. Okay. So t minus t naught is equal to e power minus kt by mc minus c dash. Upper t in our t naught plus be some capital C times e power minus kt divided by mc. Where is the The kt divided by mc, they took it as some capital constant, but this is how the expression is. So, if you want to find the temperature of the system at some instant, because the temperature of the surrounding being very large is assumed to be a constant. Another, if you want to find the temperature of the system at some instant, you will substitute the time figure that will give you the value of the temperature at that instant. C a power x plus y one the a power x into a power y up. So e power minus k t divided by m c minus c dash one the e power minus k t divided by m c into e power minus c. E is a constant. C is a constant. Oh, sorry, minus c dash. So e power minus c dash we will call it as some other constant capital C. So the capital C that is. See this when you want fuller differential equations, you want. You need to know you need to understand how it works. Now 
ఫర్ ఎస్ హాలిడే రైట్ నో క్రిస్మస్ అంటే థర్టీ ఫస్ట్ ఫస్ట్ సో దీన్ని టీచ్ విత్ రొటేషన్ మెకానిక్స్ గ్రావిటేషన్ రొటేషన్ మెకానిక్స్ గురించి సార్ సింపుల్ ఐ థింకింగ్ దట్ సింగ్ దిస్ ఆల్ సమ్ బ్రైట్ టాపిక్స్ ఇట్ బి బోరింగ్ ఇదిగా అది పర్తన వల్ల సో ముందు చేసిన థర్మోడైనమిక్స్ థర్మోడైనమిక్స్ అండ్ కైనెటిక్ థియరీ ఐ ప్లానింగ్ టు బి రికార్డెడ్ లెక్చర్ సో టు టు టెన్ కమ్ దట్ ఐ కెన్ హెల్ప్ టు ద ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఇదన్న రొంబ టైం వేస్ట్ అవుతుంది బేస్ ఆఫ్ సింపుల్ ఆర్ మై క్వశ్చన్ ఆర్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ నెక్స్ట్ ఇయర్ ఐ విల్ రిపీట్ ఆల్ especially waves waves code chapter here the wave optics have a chapter i see students struggling there and all i want a very particular i want to teach them in the are very simple harmonic question it comes uh, in a chapter called alternating current those two chapters are again slightly tough and unfortunately those two are the toughest chapters in the ac and uh, wave optics If you understand the way is it, but 95% of the people who don't know the waves concept will say that you miss it. But for our angle, they build up. I told you in the beginning, the web physics is tough. You should be trying to put an effort to understand. So you should not say that it is tough, but that is the reality. not saying you can master all the chapters when a time will come you have only 8 months to learn it's a principle but for 12th you have 12 months solid 12 months to learn march la or march la okay ore pakka constant rate rendu pakkam add panna appo see flat c1 that side c2 id and the pakkam pokko c2 minus c1 adu in or constant so that okay so make a note of these two graphs are if you draw a graph showing the variation of change in temperature to time it will be a rectangular type of delta change in temperature versus time will be a rectangular type of thing basically it's an exponential curve then uh, see temperature now t minus t not is actually exponentially decreasing exponentially decreasing the graph of the line okay similarly if you draw the graph for this part idaye or mathematical equation avach if you draw the graph then this ln of t minus t not if you take it as y this k by mc if you take it as m if you take this t as x we will be looking in the form y is equal to mx plus c so y is equal to mx plus c will either be a decreasing graph or an increasing graph provided if the slope of graph is positive or negative ipo pathinga y vand negative if you push the minus sign to the other side then slope becomes negative slope negative on a decreasing graph and that graph will be so Why this y is equal to mx plus c came, I think I've sent a video, you guys can have a look at it. If you have a derived version, I've sent a video in max. But this is two minutes from the point. Basically, you can derive any equation for straight lines using one concept of the system. So, the slope is more than sufficient for you to derive any equation. <laughs>
Thank you, sir.